Good afternoon. The Metropolitan Board of Zoning Appeals is now in session for its regularly scheduled meeting of September the 16th. Uh, yes, sir. Is Metro 3 ready for us? Because we don't have the screens on yet. Sorry. Is that you or Metro 3? That's me. All right. Okay, we're good. All right. The, uh, the board is empowered to act on cases before you today under Section 174180 of the Metro Code of Law. Uh, it is imperative anyone wishing to address this board to come forward, have a seat at the table. Um, before you hit the buttons there, just I'll help you to make sure. We've, we've got a little issue with microphones in the room, but uh, if you push it twice or too many people push it, it shuts all the microphones down. So uh, when you come up to testify, I'll, I'll help you with that. Uh, the board will go through all cases set for public hearing today, and after each case, the board will uh, discuss and vote on the cases before you. Um, in cases with opposition, both the opposition and the appellant will have 10 minutes to present their case. Uh, that time will be kept over here at this station. I'll be sure to keep you apprised of how much time you have. Our little clock that normally sits in front of Miss Davis is uh, not functional today, so... Uh, we'll be keeping that uh, on the field, as they say in, in football terms. Uh, if you're here for a case that does not have opposition, you'll have five minutes to present your case to the board. Uh, that clock runs during your testimony. It's stopped for any questions from the board members and your answers to those questions. Uh, once you're done with your answer, we'll start that clock back up. The uh, board does have a consent agenda, and prior to today's meeting, the chairman reviews the cases for consent. And I'll go through those cases now that are recommended for the consent agenda. If you are here for a case in opposition to any of the cases I call, please raise your hand and uh, make sure I get, uh, get my attention. So the uh, first case recommended for the consent agenda is case 2021-119. Adrian Williamson at 1022 43rd Avenue North requesting a variance in the side setback requirements. Is there anyone here in opposition to case 119? Mr. Chairman, I see none. The next case recommended for consent is case 2021-120, Ed Seifert, 2719 Torbett Street, requesting a special exception to construct an eight-unit multifamily development. Is there anyone here in opposition to case 120? Mr. Chairman, seeing none. The third case recommended for consent, case 2021-121, Covenant of the Cross Church at 324 Nawakwa Trail, uh, requesting a special exception for a new church. Is there anyone here in opposition to case 121? Mr. Chairman, I see none. The next case for consent recommended is case 2021-126. Scott Stevens at 2411 Volks Lane, uh, requesting a variance in the number of driveway provisions in R10 to construct a uh, new residence. Is there anyone here in opposition to case 126? on Vox. Mr. Chairman, seeing none. Then finally, the last case recommended for consent, case 2021-130, Good Pastor Christian School, 635A Due West Avenue, requesting variance in height and setbacks requirements in the CS District to construct uh, new billboards. Is there anyone here in opposition to case 130? Mr. Chairman, seeing no hands, your case is recommended for consent. Again, our case is 119, 120, 121, 126, and 130. All right, there's a, a motion for the consent agenda, and I'll make a note that the, the case 120 is uh, a case that this board approved in 2019, and it, the uh, case before us uh, on that number is the exact same proposal, so that is why uh, that one was on consent. And there is a motion for the consent agenda. Is there a motion. second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. Okay, again, if you're here for cases uh, 119, 120, 121, 126, or 130, your cases have been approved, you are free to go. Uh, please follow up with the coach department uh, beginning next week and discuss your permit. Uh, Mr. Chairman, a couple preliminary announcements on our agenda. Uh, the first, we uh, have case 2021-115 is requested a deferral until the first meeting of October. What, what number is that? 
that's case 115 okay. at uh, 924 8th Avenue South. This was a case that you all deferred. I think they were going to come up with a different plan. They're still working with their client on, on coming up with a proposal. And so before they have that ready, they, they'd like so, some additional time. Okay. Is there... Do we need to make a motion for that, or is there any? I don't think so. I'm, I, I maybe as far as administratively, if, if y'all are okay with that. Yeah. Um, did anybody object to that? Then, yeah, that's fine. Okay. And uh, the second item on our agenda preliminary announcements, case 2021-116. Uh, this was um, the case uh, by Ms. Janine Thomas at uh, 2314 Seaford Street. This case was only heard by four members of this board. Um, that's Mr. Lawless, Ms. Karpinek, Ms. Davis, and Mr. Newton. Ms. Karpinek's not present, therefore we don't have a quorum for that case. I've talked to the applicant and kind of explained the situation. Uh, they'll be back here on October um, to that first meeting in October. The other three members who did not participate in that case are eligible to go online and watch the case and become eligible between now and that hearing. Uh, I will poll uh, the three of you before that meeting to see if you have and if you wish to participate and if so you can vote in that case uh, but that's where we're yes sir it's dirt deferred to the first meeting in october due to lack of a quorum and did you say you would give us or ask us whether we uh, watched it that's correct yes sir okay, thanks. Be a I'll, I'll give you a reminder uh, as well if if you wish to and those are the only preliminary announcements I have today, Mr. Chairman. I'll call the first case. is uh, will be case 2021-124. And that will be uh, Mr. Kian uh, Sardasht. I hope I pronounced your name. I apologize if I have. Uh, and, and the owner, Brian Sharp, of the property at 2955 Nolensville Pike, requesting a special exception in the street setback uh, requirements along Timmins Street and CS to allow legal use and construction of a 20 by 40 addition to the side and rear of the existing auto sales and auto repair business. Referred to the board under section 17.12035D, the appellant has alleged the board would have jurisdiction under section 1740.180 item D. Is the applicant present for case 124? All right, sir, come on, come on forward. Uh, have a seat at the table, I'll be right there to help you. I'm going to go through the photographs first, uh, and then, I, sir, I'll turn it over to you to, to present your testimony. Okay, the uh, subject property is located at the northwest margin of Timmins Street. That's the street running east-west here, and Knowlesville Pike is in the CS Zone District. Uh, this is a legally non-conforming auto sales lot, and I say legally non-conforming. It's non-conforming to the current standards. Uh, this, this auto sales lot existed prior to the current regulations that require walls and landscaping and fencing and such. So, uh, What's at issue today, however, are two additions that were constructed uh, that we could not find permits for that the applicants have labeled shop area. It's this rectangle here. A view from Timmins Street looking north. Uh, this is the, the building and the, the um, kind of carport awning covering there. Aerial photo, that would be this structure. It's there. And a view from Timmins looking into the site. And, uh, those are the photographs that we have. They've requested a special exception uh, due to the street setback in CS. The um, setbacks actually for the side property lines. Uh, there's zero setback required in CS, so that two-foot setback you see here actually does conform. Uh, the issue on the street setback give you the, the quick code section here. Um, CS zoning requires a 15-foot setback off the property line, and the structure is 9.44 according to their uh, thing. This is not a variance. It is a special exception because this property is in the urban zoning overlay. And um, so it requires you guys to review it. Um, and Joey, could you go back to the, the side, that side view from mm -hmm. Simmons? That view, well, Good. yeah. So, so, I'm sorry, that one right there. So the, the, only, the only part of that property that is not in compliance with setbacks is that 
awning, I mean, that uh, covered area right there? Yes, sir, that's correct. The, and uh, so as far as we know, the red uh, tin building is in compliance. It is. The, um, the rear setback in this case, there's a note from the Planning Commission talks about rear setback reduction. The rear setback is actually the northern property boundary uh, in this case because Timmins is the shorter lot line. Uh, generally, that is considered front for purposes of rear setback determination because uh, it has the shorter street frontage. So they're actually the rear property lines up here to the north. So no issues there. In CS, there is no setback on the side. Uh, so that does conform with the setback. So the issue, as you discussed, is uh, this carport portion. The, oh, I think I did this with that twice. And it, it, nope, you're good. Okay, sorry, it started blinking on me. Um, so the, the gray roof on this aerial photo is really the only aspect of this that we're talking about. Correct, the, um, the, the 101 Motorsports Canopy, which you see here, is legally non-conforming. That that structure and the, the sort of the pay station up underneath that is, is, has been there for many decades, so uh, is is not an issue. It's it's the it's the gray portion here. You received a a uh, email, I believe, or a letter from the council member in opposition to the request, um, and the planning commission, on their recommendation, they essentially defer to you based on merit of the case. So. With that, I'll turn that. I'll turn in my portion of the thing, and sir, I'll uh, I'll come over and help you with that mic there. In just a second, and we'll get started. Is there anybody here in opposition to this case? Okay, so we'll have each side will have ten minutes. And okay, is it or? Is his uh, mic on over here? Yeah, go ahead and hit the mic on, sir. Yes, sir. If you state your name and address and tell us uh, what you'd like for us to do. Uh, my name is Keon Hamzapur. Uh, I need everybody to be quiet, please. Uh, yes, sir. My name is Keon Hamzapur. Uh, we're referring to 2955 Nolensville Pike. Uh, me and my family's car dealership right here. Um, uh, we're, uh, Coates came by and said we needed a building permit for it. Uh, we've been at this location almost five and a half, six years now. Um, it's been there. It's, it's really uh, very essential for our business. We detail vehicles, change out small parts on some vehicles, and, it's, uh, and that, that little gray portion awning, it keeps the rain out. Uh, it's, it really helps out. Um, uh, yeah, we're just uh, trying to, it's a small metal sheet garage. It's not, doesn't have anything crazy. It's like a carport, but uh, yeah, we have no problem um, uh, uh, going with Metro standards, keeping the area clean, everything. Um, the codes had two other things. Said we had to paint the port. We did that. It said clean up the area. We did that. Um, just uh, the only thing left is the building permit. So it, it does the lot look like it does now with this aerial photo because it 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 looks like a a lot going on. Uh, you said you cleaned it up, which implies it was not uh, cleaned up, cleaned up. So what what does it look like today? Uh, today on the the side where Metro where property standards came by and pointed, we we cleaned up those areas. It was like on the side of the garage more towards the building, um, but it's, it's good now. Okay. And then how did you all, I guess you all installed all three of these buildings? Uh, no, sir. We, we installed the awning. The awning. Okay. Yes, so you said you've been here five years? Yes, sir. So when did, when did the when did the the red when did the the building with the white roof get installed? You all didn't do that. No, sir, just the awning. Okay. And so when did that back it looks like from aerial photos we have March seventeen, the white building shows up. And in nineteen 
in March of 19, it shows the awning and the white building. And then, and currently, it shows that little third thing in the very back, mm -hmm. which is light brown. And, and again, it, to, from what I understand from our zoning administrator, the white roof and the roof behind it are, are compliant. So those aren't before us uh, today. It's the gray roof that uh, is asking for the special exception and, and uh, mm -hmm. setback. Yes. Sir. So, but you're saying you didn't, you just, you all did the, when did that brown roof structure happen? Uh, the brown, is it the, the one on the? The one at the very, at the top of the picture by the white car. Oh, okay, that one. Uh, yeah. That one was, I believe we did make that addition about two, three years ago, yes sir. Okay. And again, that's the, according to our, intro from the zoning administrator that's yes. not uh, part of the discussion um, today uh, yeah. the the stoop that's very, uh, that was already been there 20 years ago where the 101 motorsport sign is where that side door that stoop actually extends further than the gray awning so and the the posts for the awning match exactly with uh, the building okay so you're saying that where it says Nashville auto glass sticks out further than the awning yes sir okay and that was there 20, 25 years. Okay. To clarify, I think you're, you're, you're saying not that Nashville Auto Glass sticks out farther than the awning, but the gray uh, stoop yes, below sir. that yes, sticks sir. out farther than the awning. The description says that the awning is in alignment with that Nashville Auto Glass wall. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Cool. Any, any other questions? Yeah, uh, you mentioned you do car detailing here, it, uh, do you do any auto repair here? Because I know that was something in the council council member's letter that said you guys are doing auto repair there as well. Yeah, we do. Um, we didn't know the property. We couldn't do um, like service, like detailing and changing out small parts out of a vehicle. Uh, we didn't know. Uh, after get, getting the building permit, we, uh, we intend on uh, going after a service license. That's what uh, property standards recommended we do. So, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So that you're you're planning you're planning on increasing the use of this area. It sounds like if you get that license. Um, yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Any other questions at this time? Do you have anything else to add at this time? You'll have the way the process works. You speak. The folks in opposition speak, and then you'll have a chance to come back and address anything that they have said or any other questions that may have come up. So if you have anything else to say at this time, feel free to say it. Otherwise, you can hold your time for after the opposition. Um, uh, not, nothing at this time, sir. Okay. Uh, so at this point, I'm not sure how much time. Mr. Chairman, he's got about two and a half minutes of rebuttal. So. Okay. Uh, you'll have two and a half minutes uh, after... Uh, the other uh, folks talk and to continue to make your case or answer any of the questions or comments that they have. Yes, sir. So at this time, if you'll take your seat and then um, the opposition can come forward, I remind the opposition and the audience that each side uh, has 10 minutes total. So if you uh, want to speak, then allocate your time between yourselves. Um, if you have somebody that wants to speak for you, that's certainly fine too, but just know that there's 10 minutes total for the group, not counting the time that's taken by our questioning. Is this one already on? That one is right there. Okay. Yeah. Don, you want to go? It, it doesn't matter who goes first, but whoever goes first, uh, the other mic should be off just so you don't get echo. So you go first. Is this mic Is this mic on? Yeah, so you catch your mic off. Okay. If he's going to go first, then cut your mic off. Just press that button. There you go. And then press your button on. See the red light? You're good. And so, sir, if you uh, state your name and your address, and then each of you, when you speak, your name and address, and then uh, tell us what you have to say. Certainly. Thank you. My name is Don Cheris, 500 Timmins Street. I'm here on behalf of about 12 neighbors that submitted to you. We hope you got a letter of opposition to this variance request. 
We have three reasons we would oppose this. The first is this is not use zone for automotive repair. We provided to you a letter from the Master of Codes that indicated that not zoned for automotive service repair salvage value. We also provided pictures from their lot of various automotive repair type things being done. You'll see engine cam, engine blocks, tire struts, door panels, seats, all being done on this lot. And I would also point out the side of their building advertises as Nashville Auto Glass. And if you Google that, you'll see that it pulls up their address and they indicate that it's an auto glass shop. So again, to us, that's a violation of the use per codes. I think you'd already referred to some of these photos from the assessor's office that show these buildings being added on the back, none of which are permitted. And they added those so they could do mechanical work. The next reason we oppose this is this is a tremendous public safety issue. They now have no parking on their lot. So when they get a trailer delivering, you know, six, eight cars, they park that on Timmins. And we provided pictures of that in our email that show that being blocked. Hopefully you were able to see those. Um, oftentimes we can't even get by on our lane. We have to go into the other lane. Since they're doing so many cars, they park some of the cars on the street. And we often have, oftentimes have cars half parked on the street, sometimes fully parked on the street. And the neighbors have 15 pictures we can show you of that happening. We just were not able to submit due to the size of the email. So by doing so many cars and having so many cars being needing parts, they get multiple deliveries a day. And when those delivery vans come, they park on Timmins. And since they are doing windshield repair and have a business there, they're often doing windshield repair in those safe light auto vans that are doing the repair park on Timmins. And they're typically there several hours as they replace a windshield. So we feel this creates a tremendous safety issue for the neighbors, for the general public, and for your fire, your ambulance, your police. It's a private business using public right of way. And we would oppose this. Chris will now touch on our third reason. Chris Saunders, 592. All right, sir, if you would cut yes. off your mic and then you press the button to have your mic. That's uh, one more time, sir. You, you, the red light's off. On right. the right. There you go. You're uh, good. Chris Sorry. Saunders, 519 Timmins. Um, yes, the street is being used as a workshop, and the underneath the awning is a workshop. I feel that uh, if we kind of ignore the setbacks that are there, it's just going to push it further into the street. So there's a minimum street setback of 15 feet and 20 foot at the back, which is there for a reason. And as they are just absolutely no space there at the moment, work is conducted in the street. It's going to compound it. And as was said, if you enter Timmins Street, you have to often break hard because of the congestion. And then if somebody's following behind you, it's... it's Obviously, there's going to be some kind of rear end at some point. <clears throat> it's also uh, compounded by there's a restaurant across the street. If you look at the bottom of the picture, you can see cars parked there. So there's usually seven or eight vehicles there. So there really is no room to move once you fill up that street. Last night, we had a tractor trailer at 10 p.m. loading and unloading vehicles. So it, it, it's not even restricted to business hours. So it's a residential street that's um, ha having its entrance really marred. Thank you. Any, any questions at this point? All right, sir. Who, whoever's next? Uh, Robert Walsh. I'm 524 Timmins. Uh, I think they said all there is to say. I mean, literally, they're operating this business in the street. It's quite often you turn on the street and you're not going to stay. It's, there's not enough room for two cars to get through. There's only enough room for one car to get through. If someone's pulling out of the restaurant, you're blocked. And it's just, it's not, uh, it's not a good situation at all. Living on that street is very difficult because of this business. And gentlemen, you've got about five and a half minutes remaining. All right, sir. Um, Grant White, 509 Timmins. There was a, um, a codes violation from March of this year that instructed them that, you know, not zoned for auto service, repair and salvage. They were given 30 days or a month to rectify the situation. Clearly, that hasn't been rectified. So I guess my question would be, you know, why hasn't anything, why, why are they still able to do this when they've been told specifically not to? And that was, 
everything else has been covered by the other guys. Are there any, any other questions for the applicant? I mean, for the opposition? And, and I guess one of the things I heard, yeah, I mean, you, you've heard the, the case so far and that, that <clears throat> you know, they're asking for a, a special exception to allow a shorter setback, which would keep the gray uh, awning section that you see in the picture here. And what I heard you all say is that because there's so much work that happens under that awning, there's no place for deliveries and other cars to park, and that means that they that that happens in the street, and that's where the nuisance is to the neighborhood. Okay, I just want to make sure I, I, that's what I heard. I want to make sure I get it, and then and then make sure that you all uh, know that that we're you know there are often a lot of issues that are raised by folks that have problems with their neighbors here, and some are relevant to this board and, and, and some we have no issue or, or ability to, to deal with. And so uh, I just want to make sure that you all understand that, that our, our job is just to talk about this uh, setback request and the impact it has and whether or not they meet the criteria for, uh, for this setback uh, request. And, and, and that, that's really all, all we're here for. And the other issues uh, should have recourse uh, in other Metro departments and boards and that type of thing. It's on now. Um, I guess to that point is the awning is actually, since they're working under the awning, the work continues to flow outside of the awning. And so I guess that would be the, the primary reason is specifically, we just touched on the awning, is that they've made their workspace get closer and closer to the road, which Again, they don't seem to have any problem with putting their cars on the road from the awning. That's why I think we're against giving any sort of um, deference to them here because I feel like it's already abused the workspace and all they're trying to do is get closer to the road. Okay, thank you. It's working, but it's not. I think we're ready once again. Okay. okay. But I guess what I'm saying is if they were within the I would I would oftentimes they have trucks with a trailer full of cars, if you think about six or eight cars being delivered, and we provided some of those pictures. Like that snack pool truck that yes. Exactly. So there's 
there's not room on the lot the way they have it configured to have that drive on their lot and unload, so they unload on Timmins. And again, we would refer you to the photos that we show that illustrate that. And additionally, the, the photos we just passed out, we feel shows the level of blockage that we have. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions for the opposition? Did you all have anything else to add? Only that it's not zoned for repair, and you can Google it. It's listed as a repair shop. I right. Mean, well, one of, one of the things, and again, this, this is not on, on topic oh, see, today. Yes, uh, the, the zoning administrator has said this is a, a legally nonconforming uh, you know, uh, use, meaning that, uh, and, and you guys can do your research there. If you've been in the neighborhood a long time, you can can come back and, and, and address that if, if you need to. But it, if it's been a, a repair shop or it's been an auto shop and similar use uh, in constant use, then, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's grandfathered in. And so that, that question is not before us today. Um, there, there are other, again, if, you, if that is something that the neighborhood feels like is an, an error in the use, then there's pass for that. But it's a, it's a pretty uphill climb as long as you have an existing business that's there. Uh, but that's not something that's on our on our docket today. Any other? Thank you. Then we will bring the applicant uh, back, and the applicant can respond to our questions as long as we have, and has two and a half minutes uh, of his own time to to speak to these issues that were raised by the opposition. Mr. Chairman, while the applicant comes back, I remind the board, um, this is not a variance case, but a special exception. I'll read to you just briefly from the code, the uh, standard of review for you all in these cases, the applicant shall provide evidence to the board uh, as provided uh, that the proposed building setback shall not create an adverse impact on adjacent properties nor detract from a strong pedestrian friendly environment. That is your standard of review. All right. Yes, sir. Um, the main priority of the business is a car dealership. Uh, you know, AutoZone is right next door to us. We'll occasionally order a part from AutoZone, and they'll pull over uh, right there on the side, and they'll, they're in and out less than two minutes. And other times, we have customers that come and park over there, but we immediately get them off the street. At no point in time have we ever worked on a vehicle on Timmins Street, ever. So them, uh, the prior people prior saying we work on vehicles in the middle of the street is untrue. And yeah, we, our main priority is, is the car business. And we don't, we're not a repair business where we work on outside, uh, outside people. We only do our own vehicle. The vehicles you see on the lot are the only vehicles that we will touch. We do not work on outside. We don't take in customer jobs or anything. Nolensville Road is the auto hub of Nashville. There are ton, there are 50, maybe to 100, maybe car dealerships, uh, repair businesses on this road. I'm not saying that does not give no way excuse for there to be um, like a snap-on truck delivering tools or something. I'm not, I'm not saying that that gives an excuse, but I mean that typically that will happen. They'll pull up on the side of a street and deliver something, um, but. Uh, and we always, again, customer will park a vehicle there. We immediately bring it inside. There's room. There's always room. We uh, see we have a bunch of room on the car that we can still bring vehicles in. I, uh, so, um, I mean, I guess, it, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but when I look at this, this aerial photo, which I don't know, do we have any idea when the aerial photo was taken? I mean, it, it definitely was after 2019 because that's when, you all said that the yes, this particular aerial was shot uh, in February or March of 2020. So, so a little more than a year ago, and I don't see. I don't see a, a evidence that there's always plenty of room. I mean, it looks like you're pretty crowded. Uh, it is not that packed right now. Like if we were to pass that street right now, it'd be half of those vehicles on there. Um, and so, the Joey, go back to that. Uh, Nope, the other one. Nope, the, that one. And so I guess the other standard that Mr. Hargis had, had 
read for the special exception is, you know, does it um, not, I, I don't know, this may be a double negative, but does it not take away, you know, does it promote a pedestrian friendly environment? And this is the most recent picture. And I, I, I think I'm, I, I'm having a tough time seeing how that, you know, white van in the middle of the sidewalk promotes a pedestrian friendly environment. And the aerial photo also does the same thing. So I guess from your perspective, you know, if we were to grant the special exception, what type of guarantee or commitment can you give to this board that we're not going to see what we see in almost every picture, which is the sidewalk being blocked, too many cars, oh. and and that type of thing. I mean, it, it, yes, sir. You, you got a lot of business on a little bitty spot, and I, I, I appreciate you all generating that much business and I, I applaud you for that, but you got a lot of stuff going on in a tiny little spot that's impacting your neighbors. Sir, um, in the five to six years, I've, we've never had one single neighbor ever come up to us and complain about this. That's another thing that I've noticed. Never, not one time. If, if they were, and, and us ourselves, we try to keep the vehicles off there and no one even had to come up to us and do it, but we try 100% of the time to keep vehicles away from that area. So, But I, I do see how uh, we have pedestrians walk inside our car lot all the time. We, I mean, it's, it's a pretty pedestrian, uh, pedestrian friendly area. Like we let people walk onto the car lot when they don't want to go around. I mean, there you could go around too, but, um, but yeah, that, that sidewalk is probably twice the size. It's really half that size, the sidewalk. That's not all of the sidewalk right there, that huge thing. It's really half of that. And um, yeah, if I could, if the neighbors would come and talk to us, we can come to an agreement to where this doesn't happen, um, where we keep it to a bare minimum, and where 90% of our vehicles are not unloaded and offloaded there. They're at a different site, so it's, I don't know. We try 100% to be very friendly, uh, to, to keep our neighbors in mind in the back, for sure. Um, but okay. So if if per se there is a condition of uh, that that you didn't offload any vehicles or any parts or anything on Timmins Street, would would you be amenable to that? Um. I can definitely, um, I can agree to no vehicles being loaded or offloaded there, yes, but. What about like, parts and, and. Like auto zones right next to us, they, they show up in a little Ford Focus sedan. I don't, and then they just, they're there for literally less than two minutes. I don't, it's. Okay. Um, but huge, huge parts or something like that, yeah, they don't get delivered there. But small parts, yes, yeah, like, like an air filter or something like that. Um. I can ask the auto parts, like O'Reilly's, AutoZone, I can ask them, look, stop pulling onto Timmons Street, go, uh, go on, come towards us on the other side to, to the car life. That, we, I can definitely ask them to do that. It's, it's usually, they, they usually always just come, because it's the side doors right there, it's easy for them, but if this, if this for, I can definitely ask them to go the other way. And I, I understand. I, I live off Nolansville, too, and yes, I know why you don't want to pull off of Nolansville. <laughs> like, I, I get that. You, you want to pull on the side street. But um, that just, I, I think, I, I'm kind of like the, the, the chairman. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hear from you how you can promote this pedestrian-friendly environment that doesn't adversely impact the neighbors, and I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to hear that from you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, and... and you know, I guess, you know, one of the things that, to me, the most problematic aspect of that is that corner right there that you see on the aerial photo where you have, and, and I guess, is the red car something that, is that your car that? No, sir, that belongs to the uh, address that's connected to it. Um, the building that's connected to us is another car lot uh, where you see the yard up there. Um, three of those vehicles are, the, are theirs from the photo that I'm seeing right now. Okay. So the so the the red the, one and the two white on the left. The two. One so the property the to the to the now the, and it looks like they have a parking lot in the and they're behind the house or whatever yes. that is. Yes, sir. 
So those cars should probably have been in that empty parking lot instead of yeah. blocking the sidewalk. <clears throat> Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, they, they, their house is like, the house is like on the left side, I guess they, that's when they go, go in and out at, um, but we, we don't have an issue with them at all if they wanted to park next to the, we never complained about it or anything, but if, if our neighbors behind us on Timmons Street had a problem with it, I'd definitely ask them to stop parking there. Other questions? Uh, you testified or at least you stated that the only cars that you do any work on there were sold by you all from that location the the vehicles that we have for so sale all of those sold. cars that are there you're either selling them or if they're under the the awning or what have you those are cars all so no others no others are there no sir all those vehicles belong to us and they're for sale whose dumpster is that uh, in this picture next to the little white looks like a minivan or an that's SUV ours. of some type. That's ours. It's yours. Okay, yes, so you've got it basically blocking that area. Um, the, if someone was to walk along and that snap-on truck wasn't there. The, the property line, it, it's within the property line, I believe, the dumpster. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's just uh, uh, to make it pedestrian friendly. Right. It's sort of strange for me. Um, I, I'm, I'm I think you've answered my questions. Thank you, sir. Oh, no problems. Any, any other questions at this point? Mr. Chairman, I've got one from staff's uh, question. Looking through, this is a special exception. I guess my question to the owner, did you hold a neighborhood meeting? Uh, we, we did go around to other businesses to see if they had a problem. Um, we had one of my salesmen go knock on a few doors on 10 minutes. He didn't go to every single one. You know, kind, of, kind of not my question. So the, the board and its rules, and it's, it's actually been upheld in court, that, that for this board can consider a case, you've got to hold a community meeting. So you schedule a place and time for people to come and, you know, talk through what you're doing. Did you did you send out notices and, and hold such a meeting? I did. Yes, okay. Sir. Okay. And, and where, where was the meeting held in? Uh, at our car dealership. And what day? This was almost two weeks before today, two, three weeks before. And, and how many people came? Uh, 13 businesses. 13 businesses, yes, but no sir. homeowners? 13 people, yes, sir. Uh, no, no homeowners. And then how, where, is, Joey, does that go to how, how many people? I mean, was it within 1,000 feet? Yes, sir. It's based off the same mail list provided for the, for the notice of this hearing. All businesses within the mail list, yes, sir. Okay. So, that's kind of my question. You sent out a second batch of letters to the same mail list that you did the first time saying, hey, we're going to hold a neighborhood meeting at this date and time at this place because I'm looking in your packet and I'm not seeing anything documenting that. Um, and, and what happens if, if you didn't do that, if you didn't have the meeting, then we defer this case and give you a chance to have your meeting, but you have to have that meeting. So... Uh, that's the question. If, you, if you're testifying that you sent out two mass mailings. I didn't send out the letters. We did knock on doors for you knocked out, right. for the meeting, community meeting, yes, sir. Didn't, didn't the, the, community meet, meeting. the community meeting didn't. Uh, this thing. There you go. All right. This is, you know, I, w I wasn't here at the last meeting, and apparently they didn't have these troubles. So we, I think we've isolated where the source of the trouble is, and <laughs> apologizing for that with the microphones. Um, so, all right. So the fact that you didn't have the community meeting means, and 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 I apologize to the rest of the group. Although I'm I'm glad that since you made the time to come out here, that we had the chance to to do this. Um, that is a requirement of this board for us to decide it. And so we will have to uh, make sure that you have that community meeting before we decide this case. Um, I do think it is. We can't go ahead and vote on it because we're going to end up having this meeting again because the applicant has taken, this has taken 30 or 40 minutes and we're going to redo all this because he forgot, to, he didn't comply with the rules. As, uh, yeah, I know he's under the obligation, I, but I mean, if, if we're going to deny it, uh, there's no harm, and it saves the neighbors the, the, the possibility of having to come back again, which they'll probably want to do because they seem 
seem uh, you know very interested in this issue. So can, that's my concern. I, so, I get your your procedural question. So, oh yes, I, and I've got one other question. Where was the notice posted on the property? It th there was a photo that had I saw. Did they, Joey? I hate to ask you to. No, there, I, I remember seeing did, there right there. There it is. That's okay, right. great. Thank you. So. Let me, um, it, it, unless there's objection from the board, let me ask the applicant to, if, if there's anything else to add, and then we can close our public hearing and discuss how we want to proceed given the fact that there was not a community meeting. So, sir, did you have anything else that you needed, that you wanted to, to say? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Then we will close the public hearing and decide, I, you know, again, you know, what do we do? Um, well, I would be prepared to make a motion that if we vote on it, vote it down. Vote on it, that we go ahead and vote on it. If it's not approved, it's done. But if there are not enough votes to vote it down, then he has to go back through the process and do it the way he was supposed to do it the first time. If Mr. Argus is. Well, so I mean, our zoning I'm administrators are going to have to wait. Looking to, to the. Uh, <laughs> That's our legal practical. counsel and yeah, that's I'm trying to be practical. I realize that Mr. Hargis ought to ought to inform us on that, but it just again I made my point about everybody coming back because the applicant didn't apply, didn't comply with the rules. No, I, Mr. Pepper, I think you're 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 right in proceeding uh, with that. I, I would I would be mindful if there's a motion to approve that you not approve until that meeting happens. That the, the court case we had came out of Jolton where th this board heard it approved it and the court remanded it back to the board because they didn't hold a neighborhood meeting basically vacated the board's action and sent it back so it, it's fine if, if you guys are, are you know motion either way i would just say let's don't if you if the motion is to approve then we need to postpone vote until this meeting occurs because there may be something come out of this meeting that um, a, a condition or something to that effect but i i think what you're proposing is fine well, I'm, just, You'll make I'm throwing it, it out there for discussion. Right, so my, my thought is, I should say, is, is not just our time, but it's also the neighbors that showed up time. And they might want to, if, if they think a meeting would be helpful so that they can get something that some kind of work something out, I'm, I'm open to that. So maybe we want to yeah. uh, even ask them how they feel about it. Well, it, you know, uh, let, let's, let's spend a few minutes talking about the 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 case and see because i think that however this thing plays out it will be good uh guidance to the applicant and the neighbors and i mean when i look at the case there's a couple things that i see you know the the actual request for having a uh i don't know what what, what do we call this an on a lean to a carport. Uh, yeah, I would say an, uh, an awning or an shed awning. Roof. All right, shed roof. All right, <laughs> shed roof. That's perfect. All right, the shed roof. That sounds very architectural. The the shed roof, you know, is six feet over what the code would allow. If the if the shed roof were six feet less, we wouldn't be here. They would be in in other boards. And I don't find the the roof itself to be particularly offensive uh, or I don't find the roof and that building to be impactful on the pedestrian nature of the street that said the behavior of the applicant through a lot of the photos has impacted those things now the applicant has said that that in the one photo that was you know a, a offending the sidewalk uh, or pedestrian friendliness of the street uh, they said that was the business that's next door I think in that house behind us and my take is that I think there could possibly before we ask this applicant to tear down the shed roof I think that there is probably a path for a remedy and you know if if it you know, the, and again, there are a lot of ways to, to solve a problem, but one I have in mind is, you know, you put an opaque fence along the property line between you and that house right there that, that tries to eliminate some of the offending, uh, basically doesn't give you the opportunity to park where they're parking now. Um, 
but there may be a, they may come up with some other things that that make it less offensive. Um, but all there there are a lot of behavioral things that that aren't to me specific to the actual shed roof and is troublesome. But I don't. I, I'm not ready to just say no. I'd, I'd rather I'm at least come back with the plan, although it's troublesome and and I and. I'm not so sure I'd vote for him, even with a plan. But but that just just that on paper right there in front of us. Uh, the reason I think we're talking about it is because of the behavior of the applicant, not necessarily just this. Uh, uh, and 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 I don't think the applicant's doing anything different than a lot of the other businesses on Nolensville Road. So I don't I don't uh, hold the applicant. I mean I think this is just how those businesses operate. Uh, they shouldn't operate that way, but I think that's how they do. I I have a hard time seeing, frankly, how this doesn't affect the pedestrian nature of the street. I mean, I I mean, just the fact that you have cars pulling in and out of there, now, even if they're not on the sidewalk, if they're completely off the sidewalk, that still affects the pedestrian nature of the street, and um, anything that furthers that would, would kind of I think void out the, the case for a special exception. The fact that there's a shed there, while it's allowed, it's still, it, it still encourages more cars coming in and out of there and it encourages, you know, it discourages pedestrian use of that street. The, the, sh the, the, the shed roof only exacerbates that, in, in, in my opinion. And I, I, have, I have a hard time seeing how this could get to a place where this does not affect the pedestrian nature of the street because I mean yet the whole thing's a curb cut along there you can drive along the whole thing yes but that, that doesn't mean that that doesn't detract from the fact that that very fact frankly detracts from the pedestrian nature of the street and you know I, I do I, like I said I, I know Nolan's Road well I know that there I mean while there are lots of businesses that operate along there there's also been legislation passed in the last couple of years that limits the amount of a car of, of auto sales places on Nolan's Road. I think one every two miles, which would pretty much, or something like that, quarter mile, I don't know. But it, it essentially, you can't put a new car dealership on Nolan's Road. And it's been the intent and the, you know, the neighborhood has expressed a desire to not have that and to have a more pedestrian friendly nature, which again, I don't think, uh, which I think I've heard from the neighbors that are here today. And I've, um, heard uh, from other other neighbors as well. So I, I was long-winded with that. Okay, <laughs> okay. no, that so as, as one of our architects, that six feet is important in terms of, okay. Mr. Chairman, one one point of order, Look at, looking at our rules I, I, and talking with, with council, this discussion as far as is, is going through up till making any motion, I think you have to defer under your rules in 9D, it says that getting to the bottom applicant shall document to the board this requirement has been met meaning the neighborhood meeting failure to comply shall result in deferral of the case so oh. before you take a vote we'll have to defer uh, let them hold their meeting and come back testify to it you're allowed to open the hearing to allow any other testimony you want in before okay you and so it. so i'm going to make a motion we defer it so that we're in compliance with the rules let him get his act together we're just going to keep talking on it did, uh, as discussion of the motion, did you have something that you wanted to say at this point? Uh, and 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 I and I think that's we have a motion, we have a second. I do think if there's any criteria that anybody has, whether it's uphill, a, a steep hill, or a, a slim hill, it's nice to say it now so the neighbors and the applicant know. Well, on that vein, then um, I think the applicant should at least bring pictures of the current state the next time you come because I think that would help us just so that I know what it looks like today. So that would be my only thing. I don't want to for us to keep talking. Like, I think where I, I agree with you. I sort of feel like what they're asking for isn't related to the stuff I heard. Well, I think it's problematic and I think the applicant needs to talk to his neighbors and address the behavioral stuff. Some of this stuff, I mean, the, the way that that business, where it's located by its inherent nature isn't great for pedestrian. It's inherent existence isn't great but it existed before they bought it and it exists today and so that's not really our question so i think those were my thoughts that i kind of agreed with you like i think there's a path for a okay. remedy but that's on the applicant to kind of craft that remedy all right thank you all right we have a motion we have a second is there any more discussion or comments on the motion all in favor of the motion say aye 
Any opposed? That motion passes, and that'll be scheduled for the next scheduled meeting. If for some reason you are not able to have your uh, your uh, community meeting by our next meeting, which is the first Thursday in October, October uh, yeah. let the zoning administrator know, and then we'll just defer it out to the next meeting until that uh, community meeting has been held. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, since we have had a number of people show up in opposition, can we kind of also work with their schedules? They took their time off to come down here, and I don't think it should yeah. just be at the... Well, it's, it's, it, well it, it, I, I, I appreciate that, but we also know that we're, we have deferred the case, which means that their comments are on the public record. It is already part of the testimony, and... Um, and, and they would have a right to, to either in person or write a letter. I mean, I don't know what you, you know, it's either going to be one, one meeting, which is three weeks, or two meetings, which is five, and... Um, what can we do? May, is it possible to move it when it's reheard to move it up in the docket, maybe? At least we could do yeah, that. Yeah, that, it, it'll, it'll be, it'll, unless there's another deferred case that has a, a, a closer number, it'll be one of the first, uh, it'll probably be the first case, if not the first and the second. Uh, we sh yeah, we surely don't want to punish folks for that. Is that. Are you okay with that? That's that's fine. I'm, I've okay. just gotten stuck in court where some things get continued and I end up sitting for about two hours while it, it's just a matter of right. no importance. And, and what we'll ask, and I th since it's deferred, we will ask, uh, and we'll ask Christine to, to hear it, uh, to review the case and so that we don't have to rehear the case, and then we will ask uh, what has happened since the public meeting. Is there any new testimony? So, all right, that case is deferred until the next meeting, and we'll move to the next case. Thank okay, for next your case time. before us is case 2021-125. Dwayne Cuthbertson is the appellant. Oak Property LLC, owner of the properties located at 4021 Indiana Avenue, requesting a special exception from street setbacks from Indiana and 41st Street in the OR20 district. Uh, to construct new residential townhomes referred to the board under section 1712030 b the appellant has alleged jurisdiction under section 1740 180 item c i know the appellants here are there any parties present uh, in opposition to case 125 mr chairman seeing uh, mr cuthbertson you'll have five minutes when i get done with my presentation to present your case the um subject properties i believe is both lots 10 and 9 is that correct that's correct. I, so I apologize for my graphic here. Um, uh, it's both both the uh, red lot 10 and lot 9 beside it are involved in this case at the corner of Indiana and 41st Avenue North. Uh, subject properties, again, are these two parcels in the northwest part here. Uh, this is the site plan submitted by the app appellant in this case. And you all have received a report from the planning department uh, in this case, and I believe they recommend approval of the special exception request. This is the uh, intersection at 41st in Indiana upon my visit to the site, uh, views to the south and uh, along Indiana Avenue facing east, and then a view down 41st in the bottom right-hand corner. I'll leave the site plan up. With that, I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Cuthbertson. you got five minutes. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dwayne Cuthbertson, 409 Merritt Avenue. Um, I'll try and be brief with this one. It's a special exception to slightly reduce the street setbacks on both Indiana and uh, 41st Avenue North. We're asking for a three-foot reduction on Indiana and then a 3.3-foot reduction on 40, 41st Avenue. Uh, it's to permit these seven uh, townhomes that you see before you. And the three foot reductions are effectively triggered by allowing fire aerial access. Um, fire aerial access allows that fire truck to pull up to a three story building over 30 feet in height um, and pull their ladder out and access the roof of any structure. Uh, the fire marshal dictates what that dimension is that he or she pulls up onto the site, they have to put the riggers out and then have enough separation from the building to actually pull the ladder out. Um, typically, or very often, you can provide that space in, in this adjoining public street. But in our case, we have overhead wires on both frontages. Uh, and so it, it, whether it's electric, cable, AT&T, it doesn't matter if the fire marshal sees 
any wire extending across your frontage, they immediately say, you don't have aerial access, so you've got to provide it somewhere else. In this case, we've negotiated space in the rear uh, off of the alley, and that's a very specific dimension that the fire marshal agreed to. Uh, so that dimension is, is sort of forcing us to push this up to three uh, and ask for the reduction of the street setback by 3.3 3 feet on in, uh, 41st and then three feet uh, on Indiana. It is a special exception, so we feel like these, re these, these two reductions that we're asking for, uh, they actually, to, to us, make for a better project. It, it allows us to ensure that all parking is in the rear, uh, so we don't have any curb cuts on the street and that these townhomes are oriented to the street. Um, so we've, we feel like what we're proposing is, is conducive to a, a better pedestrian environment. It's consistent with a lot of new development that gets approved in Nashville. Very often the Planning Commission asks you to pull the buildings up and put the parking in the rear, and that's what we're asking to do. Uh, it's also consistent with a very significant development that was just unanimously approved by the Planning Commission across both 41st and Indiana, and I, I, I submitted that site plan. Uh, I hope you have it in your packet. Uh, they were approved unanimously, I think, last month by the Planning Commission. They got a 10-foot setback on 41st and a 15-foot setback on Indiana. I may have those reversed, but shallow setbacks more so than what we're asking for. Um, we did have the community meeting. One person showed up. I, I did receive a phone call from that notice that I sent out to everybody uh, from somebody who lives in the townhomes just to the south of us. Uh, they didn't really have a lot to say. They were fine with the project. I think they just feel obligated to reach out. Um, so we, I also sent letters to the council member twice, uh, emailed him and hadn't heard back from him. Uh, we have a recommendation of approval from planning, so uh, I hope that you'll find this special exception is uh, a, a good thing and allow us to proceed. So and so, but the, you will be further back from the road on both sides than it sounds like the plan that was just yes. approved. All right. Yes, sir. A any questions? Anything else to add? No, sir. All right. Close. Uh, <laughs> David, you're on a roll today. Well, that's working. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, you're back on, man. Oh, now, now it's off. There we go. All right. And, and, and the good thing is it's all being recorded for posterity, right? You want to see how technically uh, yeah, unskilled I am. It's, it's there for the watching. Um, all right, so uh, we close public hearing. In, any discussion on this? Anybody have a motion? I move that we approve uh, the request special exception because the requirements have been met. Second. Have a motion, have a second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand, say aye. aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. Congrats and good luck. All right, next case. Next case before us, case 2021-127. Uh, Thormer Lucas Engineering is the appellant. Joseph William uh, Suave, the owner of the property at 914 East Trinity Lane, requesting a variance from the fence height requirements within the front setback in the MUG. NS district to construct an eight to a 10 foot masonry wall referred to the board under section 1712.040 E26B. The appellant has alleged the board would have jurisdiction under section 1740.180 item B. You see the applicant, is there any parties here in opposition to the case? None. Sir, you'll have five minutes here just as soon as I get through this part. The uh, subject properties involved here are actually the um, parcel in red and the corner uh, piece that's here. This is on the southwest margin of Trinity Lane where Ellington Parkway uh, intersects Trinity Lane. Again, aerial view of the site and the proposal for the um, elevation for, for the block wall, kind of refreshing the board's memory. In, in a street setback, regardless of zone district, solid fences cannot exceed six feet in height within the front setback. Uh, and within the first 10 feet of the property, they can exceed 30 inches uh, in, in this case. This particular wall proposed will be behind the 10-foot mark, so it's allowed to go six, but they're proposing between eight and 10 feet uh, as, the, as the topography on this lot changes from um, 
west to east on the property higher on the western end at Ellington Parkway and topography drops off as you head east on Trinity Lane. Um, this is a look of, of the, the subject properties involved here. The bottom left photograph is the view facing west on Trinity Lane toward Ellington and you see the, the elevation change here in the bottom right hand photograph. But that is the case record that we have. And sir, if you would please state your name and your hardships for variance. Hi, my name is Yates Bateman with Former Lucas Engineering. Um, as Joey said, we're proposing an eight to 10 foot screen wall, um, as you can see here along Trinity. Uh, we are maintaining the required four foot grass strip, eight foot concrete sidewalk and two foot furnishing zone um, and have pushed the wall back a further 10 feet behind that um, back of furnishing zone. Um, on a, a different project site with the council member, uh, we explained the application, showed him sketches. Um, he received those positively. Uh, we emailed the package to him um, that you see here and have not heard back from him. I'm not sure if Metro staff has heard back either. Um, we did request 8 to 10 feet. Um, as you can see, the grade steps along Trinity. Um, in the portion where we have the wall, it is dropping almost 12 feet vertically um, over about 150 linear feet of wall, um, which is consistent with the road grade at about 8%. So it is extremely steep through there. Um, that 10 foot is the max, as you can see, kind of where each post is, the wall will step um, as the grade falls. So that really, we're gonna limit that 10 foot height to uh, a 25 foot section out of the entire 150 foot wall. Um, everything else will be limited to eight foot max. Um, and again, as it steps in reality, that will probably average out to seven feet um, when you look on the high and the low side of each step. Uh, in our view, there are two hardships. Like I mentioned, the, the grades as the wall steps. Um, there is a pool on the other side of this wall. Um, we have elected to um, Joe, if you could go back to the picture, keep the gas station to try and keep um, some of the character of this lot. It is pretty far up on the lot, um, so we're putting the pool right in front of that um, as a neighborhood amenity for the development. Um, as a part of that pool requirement, we're required to have a minimum of six foot wall um, for, for pool safety. Um, and so at, if you think about it as the wall stepping, if we're held to a max six foot height on the high end of that step with six feet, but when you go up the hill, it's gonna be less than six feet. Um, and so that, that is a portion of our, our request here is due to the grades there. Um, the other request is just for security for the pool um, and with it being along Trinity Lane, um, lots of cars and vehicles and people walking along here um, I'm not sure if our renderings made it into this PowerPoint um, or if y'all have them in the packet. We, ha we have them in our packet. What, what's the nature of the development? Uh, it's a multifamily apartment development. Okay. Um, but we are planning to heavily landscape the 10-foot grass strip between sidewalk and the wall, um, both on with ground plantings um, that will be very dense and, and uh high-end good-looking plantings um, as well as a green wall product um, for the top two feet or so of the wall um, to just further soften that um, wall construction type, um, make it a more pedestrian-friendly experience walking through there. How, how much of the overall length is the pool area? Uh, how uh, The overall length of the wall is the pool area? Um, I'd say it's about, let's see. Maybe 75%, 60 to 75% of the wall. Okay. Is this the, the exact same request that we approved before? Is that what I read here? I think that got put in our packet, but I think that was a different case yeah, that I was referring to. That was a different case that okay. maybe got right, slid in. Look. Never mind. So what exactly would you say is the hardship? I, I think the hardship is the grades and how steep it is and making the wall work as it steps along the road. Um, 
while maintaining a, a safe height for the pool and also just safety for the development um, and a, an appropriate wall height clearance um, for people along Trinity. Have you considered a lesser height? Um, because it sounds like you have enough clearance to protect the pool without going up eight to 10 feet. Um, I understand the grade and I understand that it might have to change based off the grade. I'm very familiar with this area. I actually did not grow up far from here. My family still lives probably less than a mile from here. So I drive by here every day. Mm -hmm. I am familiar with the grade. So I understand your argument, but I guess my question is like, is this, are you asking for more than maybe you need in order to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish? I think that's my question. Understood. Um, I, the pool code requires a six foot wall. And so um, in, in our view, as the wall steps down and it's in kind of rectangular chunks as the wall steps, um, if we are held to a six foot max wall, as the grade goes up and the wall height stays, you end up with a shorter than six foot section. And so what would end up happening is just lots of tiny little steps, you know, every foot or so to maintain that six foot section. But I guess what I'm hearing Ms. Davis say is you're asking for eight to 10, why not six to eight or seven to nine? Understood, that's fair. Understood, and, and we would be okay limiting that to a six to eight foot wall if, if that's, if that's a major concern. Okay. It is the, so I'm looking at this site section here. Is that, is the extensive pool kind of that, that middle step and then it steps down? Is that what you're showing there? Which one are you looking at? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and along with that, I, I see on the site section he shows breeze block, um, but it doesn't, I don't see that on the rendering, so I'm trying to understand exactly. So, well, the, the top, say, four goes about four feet on what you're proposing would be open, partially open block. It, it would be. Um, the the renderings are more. I apologize for the confusion there. The the renderings are the current currently okay. proposed plan. Um, so you just it would be a straight up concrete block all the way up. It would. That top okay. section that is currently breeze block has oh. been replaced with the, the kind of green wall product. Okay. Um, so it wouldn't just be straight masonry. Okay. So it would be like a metal mesh kind of deal with things growing on it? With ivy on it. Okay. Yes, gotcha. And that, what, what height does that start at that you're proposing at least? We don't have it exactly, but the, the height of the green wall will be two to three feet. Okay. From the top down. Okay. And what is the max height of the wall from the pool side? Not from the road side, but from the pool side. It will be the same as the road side. So it would be six to eight feet. So eight foot max. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It, it does not function as a retaining wall. It is just a wall sitting on the ground. Right. But I'm assuming the pool is flat and... Unless you got a big old slope pool deck, but I don't think that's the case. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking like the pool deck on the other side of this, if it's going straight across, like wh I'm trying to figure out where is that pool in relation to this wall that you have. Uh, so the pool is, do we have the site plan? Do y'all have the site plan? Well, I, I, if, go back, let's go back to that, uh, that, that site section. I mean, wh where, where is the pool on, on, this, on this guy here? Is gotcha. It, is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Um, it is probably, I don't know, waist height on the person. Okay. And, so it, and, it, and the pool deck steps kind of with the grade okay. as you move. Um, so the pool deck is above grade on that grade line that you're showing there? Mm, no, I'm okay. sorry. Okay. I'm not helping. <laughs> I'm sorry to make this confused. I'm just trying <laughs> no, to understand okay. what exactly is going on here. The, the pool deck, yes, the pool deck is slightly higher than the grade of the road. Okay. But okay. not much. It, okay. And, and the pool deck steps with the road to. Oh, it does step. Somewhat. It okay. It steps about two okay. to three feet. Okay. Um, and then there's an existing site wall that we're keeping that kind of creates a boundary to the pool that would then allow the grades to continue on okay. to match with the road. I think I understand a little bit better. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. 
any other questions? All right, did you have anything else to add? No. Nope, and you, you did say a six, six to anything six to eight would be acceptable, and you'd prefer more. Yes. Okay. Correct. Right. All right. We'll close the public hearing. Are you uh, so I think uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for better stating my question, because uh, that was what I was getting at. Uh, I think that there's a case for a variance here. Like, I think he's right. And I think that given what they the plan is, um, they'll, they'll need a variance from us. Um, I think we should. That is a that area is becoming more walkable. There are more people walking it now. And so I'm always concerned about sort of masonry walls along a sort of a pedestrian area and sort of accomplishing what they need but balancing it with that so i'm willing to support a variance and i'm interested in other people's thoughts between like six to eight feet I, i'm less inclined to support eight to ten but i'm listening yeah yeah and just along those lines that it looks i mean they're, they're looking at concrete blocks it kind of goes in eight inch increments so six feet eight feet six foot eight seven foot four i mean i think something along those lines but i guess that the top of it i guess is but probably that would be a wise thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I have no issue with six to eight, and I'm willing to consider more if the board feels that way, mainly because an eight-foot fence is allowed, you know, on an, an, a side or backyard now, and people are used to walking, you know, down an alley with an eight-foot fence, and it, it's still there's at least enough of a scale. And I think the grade uh, warrants that. So I, I really don't have a, a problem with the... The six to eight, it's 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 the case for more that, you know, and I think, and again, as we've had a, a discussed in other cases, a ten foot fence is just really a, a, a imposing to me. So I'm, I, I have a tough time with the, with uh, eight to ten. Uh, is this is a question more for codes or for Joey? Is, is there an? It's not. I believe there's some kind of allowance for a non opaque fence above a certain amount. Um, is that right? Is there another like two feet that we can add, that you can add if it's if it's not completely opaque, or that would the, and would this green wall, you know, count for that? I guess our, our standard we we've, we've never really had the hybrid, okay, solid open split. Okay. I mean, we've had some some folks that deal with property standards as a, as a means of getting out of compliance. Our, our code's pretty silent. It's either all solid or it's okay. all open, but the, but it's 50% open. Yeah. If you have an open fence, you can be to the property line, six feet tall, yeah. no issues. I, when I look at this, I, it's it's not bad. Gotcha. I mean, it's, okay. Thanks. You know, I, I'm in alignment with the six to eight feet. I'd just like to hear how you got to the eight to 10 feet. Is it something about the grade that, you know, drove that height in your calculations? Okay. Uh, yes, the, the existing wall that I mentioned that we're we're basically teeing into um, on the on the eastern side of the site um, or the proposed wall it it does step pretty aggressively more so than the road um, and so in again in an attempt to avoid lots of tiny steps to keep up with that grade that was why we had shown ten foot in that specific section. Um, like I said, for a max of 20 to 25 linear feet. Um, is that the section that has the logo on it? Um, the part that says the station? No, it will be the furthest. Is it the kind of grayed out section, like shown existing there on the site section? I'm looking at the, this, this part here. Uh, no, far left. Far left. Basically where the car is. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So in, in an attempt to avoid that, you know, lots of tiny steps, um, that was the intent behind having 10 foot in just that one section and the rest would be six to eight foot. Okay. And we're amenable to any restrictions along that line. Well, listening to everybody, it seems that the applicant's okay with eight feet and I think everybody else is okay with eight feet as long as it doesn't go over. I'm okay with it too. I think 10 or nine is too, probably just too high. So I'll make a motion that we approve the variance to allow the construction of an eight foot fence. Have a, mo have a motion, have a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. Good, job. Good luck. Thank you. 
Okay, Mr. Chairman, the last case of today's agenda is case 2021-128. Armando Alvarado is the appellant and owner of the property at 2203 Fox Avenue, requesting a variance from the uh, allowed driveways. Essentially, he's permitted one driveway. He's requesting variance for a second driveway uh, in the... Um, Oops, sorry. In the R6A district, um, to co construct a duplex with separate drives. Is the applicant present? Yeah, come on forward, sir. Uh, seeing that this gentleman is the only person in the audience, there is no opposition. Um, I'll go through the slides and, and, and show the board your proposal. This uh, subject property is located at the intersection of, of um, Glen Rose and Fox Avenue. Uh, in, in South Nashville, at the bottom of my photograph here is Interstate 440. This is the subject lot. There's an existing residence at the front of the property with a driveway. This gentleman is requesting to build a second dwelling at the rear of the lot uh, with its own driveway. Again, the, the existing residence, it's hard with all these lines. This is the existing residence and existing driveway. His proposal is to build a driveway leading into um, this home at the back. This is the uh, subject driveway that I spoke about before in the existing residence. This view at the bottom right photograph is the, um, the existing residence at the front of the case. But his proposal would be to take down this accessory structure, build a new home at the rear of the lot with its own driveway that uh, runs beside. With that, I'll turn it over to you, sir, to identify yourself and make your presentation. Hi, my name, is Ar my name is Armando, like you said. Uh, and the reason I wanted to, you know, uh, have a different driveway, a separate driveway for the other house is because the one the existing driveway is kind of tight, you know, and it's going up the hill. And it makes it kind of hard for other people uh, to go and turn to the other house, you know. Um, and especially because it goes up, you know, about eight feet goes up like that. Is there is there a reason you couldn't widen the existing driveway? Um, there is a, a, I mean, they're going to be two different properties, you know, and I'm afraid some of the uh, one of them is going to be sold separately, you know, and for future residents, uh, you know, you know, if we we can solve some problems for them, you know, it, it, you know, it's easier. And the good thing is that the street is dead in, you know, so mm -hmm. not not too many traffic on that area. Okay. And so the, the existing home uh, faces Fox and the proposed new home faces the other street. Is that right? Uh, the, so the existing home faces the uh, uh, Glen Rose. Okay. And, and then, so then the, the, the new one would face Fox. Correct. Okay. But they, do face, they will face different streets. Correct. Okay. Any other questions? What would you say your hardship is for this, for this variance? Uh, say that again, I'm sorry. What would you say your hardship is for this variance? Is uh, it, yeah. I mean, the uh, it's a, it's a uh, duplex, you know, uh -huh, it's right. two families, right? Uh, and you know, and that reason that I wanted to put a different driveway because they're going to be on a different, uh, going to be two different owners on those properties, you know? right? And and they're probably going to be fighting each other if you know if one get in their way you know. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Any other questions? It it sounded like a, in an earlier description the hardship may be site conditions. So the driveway's tight; it's at an angle, and maneuvering around the site. I guess that's what I heard. Okay. I heard the same thing and something about us. It's 
steep, like it goes up a hill. So I thought maybe the topography. You can see on the picture there how it goes up. All right, sir, did you have anything else to add? Hmm. Any other questions for the applicant? All right, we'll close the public hearing. I mean, you know, th this is one that you look at and you think, well, maybe they could solve it by having a big old fat wide driveway. And is that good for the neighborhood? Is it good for, you know, the two folks that live there? And I do appreciate the RSA not wanting, you know, two driveways with, you know, garages facing or whatever it is, you know, the requirements are. But the fact that they that the houses face different streets to me helped delineate that, and and I think it's the topography also means it would be uh, problematic. So I I don't have a problem. I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. I'll make a motion that we approve the variance as requested due to the conditions of the site that warrant the variance. Second. Have a motion. Have a second. Any discussion? All in favor of that variance, uh, raise your hand, say aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. Good luck. Thank you. And I think that means we're done. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.